My take on Mamigami. Hey there, it's Care. Welcome to My Take at the Lake. This falls under the caption of My Take also on Gentle Journaling, which is Janet Nash's hashtag, and Magic by the Oceans Rehash Your Stash hashtag. Both open collaborations if you want to give your spin on them. Just use the hashtag so we can find you and, and tag Janet and or Coralie at Magic by the Ocean or Janet Nash so that they can see what you're up to with their hashtag. It started with this. My YouTube friend Candy Kane at Can Candace at Candy Kane Creates once said to me, I sure wish I could embrace my misprints because I do a lot with my misprinted printouts when I'm doing my digital kits or whatever or somebody else's digital kits I uh, tend to uh, fuck them up <laughs> but I don't throw them away I print on the other side or I tear them up for collage or I rehash it I rehash that stash it's not just garbage it's you know it can be used well these are some of my very favorite prints digital kits that I've gotten from other people. You've seen this. This is what I used in my watercolor lap book. If you've not seen that, I'll link it below. It's, if I do say so myself, freaking awesome. I've used this kit that I bought from my porch prints, one of my first kits I ever purchased a few, several years ago now, and I have used the bejesus out of it. But here's top up. I printed the backside uh, upside down. <laughs> and that happens a lot uh, to me. Because I, I just, you know, going too fast, not paying attention, top side up, upside down. Uh, but you can't really tell, and it doesn't really matter in a book like this. I wish you could smell it. Yes, that's what I said, smell it. It feels like, instead of, this is just regular copy paper that I ran through my copy copier on both sides. And... Then Mommy Gami did. You know, there's a million and ten videos out there on how to do Mommy Gami. I remember doing this when I was in the first grade with my friend. Look, if you wad it up several times, it gets real soft and kind of cool and it shrinks. And I had no idea what it was called or that it was an ancient Chinese art. But look at us go. Um, there, there are traditional ways to do it. Mommy Gami paper, special paper, a special paste, the traditional Mommy Gami paste. There's DIY versions of the paste. I didn't do any of that. I, did, I didn't do any of that. I did hand lotion. Partially because when, you, when you're wadding up copy paper, it's just like a sponge and it's drawing all the oils out of your hand and your hands get really dry. And so what I did to prevent that is I took my favorite, this one is Aromatherapy Eucalyptus Spearmint by Bed Bath and Body Works. One of my favorite scents ever. And I just put a little dollop on my hand, rub my rub my hands together, and then picked up a, a piece of paper and got a lot of that off onto the paper. And I did that with each page. I'm sure that's not new. I'm sure I'm not the first one to do that. I mean, it just makes sense to have something moist on your hands. But, oh, this smells wonderful afterward. Another thing that I did to this, and I, and I must confess, I, I have done several videos for you in the last two weeks, and I've hated all of them. Must be me. I don't know what the problem is, but there's something going on. And so I, I may still bring you those, even though I just don't, I'm just not happy with how, how things turned out. But I showed you uh, my try me's and a few new toys that I got that came after Christmas. And oh, look at there. See all those dots? That's mold in my water brush. That's disgusting. What are you going to do about that? Well, I'm going to empty it and put bleach in there and the bleach will kill all that junk i'll probably cram a pipe cleaner down in there with some paper towel and just get all that mold out give it another bleach treatment and then remember to put alcohol 
in with my water because apparently I don't use my water brush nearly enough. But since we're zoomed in, I'll show you this. Um, I got finally some gold watercolor from the Kiritaki Starry Starry watercolor, and I just wet wet it, put my brush in, and then just real lightly went into the cracks that's another ancient i think it's chinese might be japanese uh, wabi sabi where the cracks of anything you know if something's broken and it's cracked the art of wabi sabi fills those cracks in with gold and so it makes the broken item even more valuable because it's had some life it's had some experience and so wabi sabi is looking at imperfect things as even better than the real thing so i took some of the there's some of the white gold on there and some of the various gold and i had put my water brush down on here and it ruined my non-laser print print it just bled all my inkjet ink and it looked really horrible so I just covered it up I just filled it in with gold and now it sparkles even more and I was I'm planning to do that on on these others I won't use the moldy brush let's use a different brush and these these metallic watercolors are fantastic I just love them but super super simple getting all that yummy mica dust on my brush here and just and then just going over kind of like the reverse of antiquing where instead of the, the color going down into the cracks it just stays up on top of the cracks and it just adds such a nice layer to it nice dimension do it all over, just in spots if you want. Hey, Bits. Hi, Bits. Very pretty. So, you know, I couldn't just leave it alone at that. I, I just was in a mommy got me mood. It's very st stress relieving, and um, I just think it turned out wonderful, and I absolutely love it. So then I wanted to see what watercolor would do. And so I just took plain copy paper and mommy gommied it. That is just a matter of taking paper and crimping it together and anything will work as you'll see. And again, so this one, I used a different scent. I used another favorite that they don't make anymore called white citrus. I just Put about yay much, size of a pea or two. Put it in my hands. And the paper is open. And you can see here is really wrinkly, here is not. So I'm going to start here this time. And I, I've got it on my hands still. I didn't rub it all in, I rubbed it around. But now a lot of that is on this paper. And it makes it so much easier to to really get crinkly. And then you just undo it again, over and over again. It's I think it's fascinating how much it shrinks up. This is a regular piece of copy paper, and you can see how small it gets just by wrinkling it up. And you'll be able to feel a little bit of a difference in here where it's real smooth. And you make sure to crinkle that first. And I've, I've watched a few videos of people doing this. And some crunch the edges first and crumple all the edges in. You know, they've got this methodical way to do it. I just wadded up paper. I, I didn't... Oh, and sometimes it tears. Uh, it gets pretty soft. 
when it's wet like that because of course there's moisture in the lotion and that's fine it's a fine place for some washi tape <laughs> truth be told i've what i did this whole pack all of these and some coffee dyed ones and didn't tear any of them first one on camera tore it because this is why i don't do tutorials on camera because it irritates me I do stupid things. Oh, look it. It's torn there and it's torn there. It's all right. So once I had them about the same size, I just did the same thing except with regular watercolor instead of metallic. I took my watercolor and just went over it with a brush. I did wet it because I wanted to see would it bleed like watercolor on watercolor paper and it really didn't. It just kind of laid there. I was hoping it would go into all these cracks and stuff and it, it really didn't. So then I just thought, well, I'll just go over it like the gold and it'll be fine. And it's fine. So what you'll see, I did a blue. This is supposed to be red, but it's the cool red on my new kit. Did the yellow, a nice cool lemon yellow, and a purple. And on the teal, which is what I wanted, I mixed up a teal color. I did some mixture of the teal that I mixed and some blue. So it's it's water colory color. It's the colors of water. I love. So you see I have one more here. I'm going to do this one in blues and purples. I think any brush would work, um, but I like the point on a round brush. I would probably use a larger one. Look how messy I've been painting and painting. And no, I didn't bring you along. I said everything I recorded in the last two weeks, I just can't stand it. I did bring you along for this try me. Alright, let's mix up some color here. Pull out my little mixing place. Wet my paints. Wet my brush. That's what they're calling red, but it is so pink. Mix up a purple. And just go over the top. Not rocket science. But um, I already have a purple, so I wanted this one to be purples and blues. So I did a little bit of purple. And I do a little bit of blue. So that it has both colors in it. So then I will have a nice collection, a nice sort of rainbow of all the colors. This one I did permanent rose, I think is what they call it. Windsor Newton Cotman permanent rose. And it's, like I said, it's not really a red at all. It's a pink. Um, and mixed that with the cool yellow lemon yellow anyway this has got some like I call them sherbet colors you know it's just that soft peach with a little bit of pink and some yellow in with the yellow and the purple well I couldn't leave it at that now could I so I did some coffee dye oh look my tea bag broke coffee and tea dyed. So I mommy got me them first. I started with plain paper and then when they were wadded up in that bowl, I sprayed them with coffee while they were still wadded up. 
and it did not bleed and move like I wanted it to either. It just got coffee where the coffee hit. It didn't really move much at all. I think the key to that would be wetting the balls before I sprayed them with coffee. That would help everything move, but it would also make it a lot harder to, to, to manipulate. So I didn't do that. I still may. Of course, I have my wonderful coffee pan. This is just instant coffee. I'll put a link below to coffee in the craft room video so you can see how I made this. It's super easy. So I could do the same technique, wet my brush, wet my coffee with coffee and, and go over like I did all these others with the watercolor. I could do that. And then I wanted to see how craft paper did. This is just a paper bag from a grocery store. Not the heavy, heavy ones. It's, it's the stuff that liquor and wine bottles come in. So it's a little bit thinner than a grocery bag. But of course that works out beautifully too. I think that would go really well in, you know, I, I want to sew this together. And the reason I call this gentle journaling, or I think it falls under the hashtag of gentle journaling is twofold. One, you're not using any brain cells here. You're wadding up paper and flattening it out and wadding up paper and flattening it out. There's not a lot of decisions to be made or creative energy to be expended. But also the feel of this, a lot, a lot of people are doing glue booking this year and slow stitching as a gentle way to craft. And there's no going wrong with slow stitching, blah, blah, blah. I just don't like sewing. I just don't like it, but I love working with material. And this now feels sort of like material. It feels like napkins to me, like a stack of soft napkins. And this is as close as I'll probably get to slow stitching. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I will stitch it together. I wanna make a fabric cover for it and put it together. And then I'm not sure what to do with it but I have enjoyed thoroughly just flipping through it and smelling it and having it nearby and just the sight of it makes makes me happy. So gentle journaling, it's super, super easy. You cannot go wrong doing it. Just like glue booking, I think we all just need a break right now of the high stakes art with a capital A and creativity with a capital C. And this one, by the way, I used a different lotion because I didn't think spearmint or citrus would smell good with the coffee, you know, cause that matters. So this is the original scent. It's like an almond cherry scent, almond cherry coffee. I'm all over it. So, so that's what this one smells like mostly coffee but i can smell i can smell the jergens underneath it these need to be you can hear they're not they're not quite there yet versus this so these need to be wadded up a little bit more a, a few more times and i will just I don't do it every single time, maybe every other time with the lotion. Just wad them up and unwad them. And look, another one there. Look at there. That is my take on Mommy Gami and uh, my hat in the ring for hashtag gentle journaling. And when I hear gentle journaling, I, I mentally see the whole junk journaling umbrella, not just journaling by writing but gentle crafting but gentle journaling sounds way better so my take on gentle journaling is gentle crafting being easy on ourselves being easy on other people if we can manage it i also did uh, before i forget a magazine page just to see how that would go um it's not as this is from good housekeeping it's not nearly as uh, robust as a piece of copy paper, but it worked. You know, you can hear the difference versus a magazine page, but it tore really easy. I guess I did tear tear something off camera. Um, plus, I don't know what I would do with it. You know, it's sideways. What good is that going to do me? <laughs> so 
that is probably just garbage, but you can do it with any kind of paper. People use scrapbooking paper, wrapping paper, newspaper, very delicate as well. But if you, if you use something delicate, maybe look up one of the DIY Mamigami pastes, because I think it has to do with, I wanna say I saw someone using cornstarch and water and just make, mixing up a simple paste and that gives it more body and more texture and make those more delicate papers stand up to the process. If you haven't done it, give it a try. Super easy. Uh, again, this is my favorite of all the ones. First favorite, I love the watercolor ones. I think this one will be great when it's done. They need to be, they're almost there. Maybe they're done as far as for this white one um maybe they're done i don't know but this is my favorite i love the watercolor and i think when i get this done i'll like it better right now it's not it's my least favorite because i i don't know i just don't like i put the tea bags on it when they were wet and got these really cool blossoms and blooms kind of like watercolor when you put something wet onto something that's already dried it will reactivate watercolor or coffee it'll reactivate that that color and push it out and that's where you get these wonderful blossoms and blooms bleeds I didn't do it to every page though <clears throat> so I'm gonna experiment a little bit more with this like like you said it needs more work and more fussing around with and then I'll I may put some gold on it I don't know Maybe some dark brown watercolor, maybe more coffee. I'm not sure just yet. And what's it going to be? I don't know. Right now, this is enough. I love this. Just flipping through it and smelling it. My, my favorite prints. Very pretty. So have a go at it. Until we meet again. Ma take at the lake. Out for now.